How's it going guys? It's your boy Jojo's Whips back with another video. And on today's video, I was gonna give you guys an update on my B5S4, which I've been building for a little bit. It was supposed to be done like a couple months ago. It was supposed to be just a simple, you know, rod swap and just try to get the motor back together. But um, but things did turn, you know, a little sour. So I'll explain that later on in the video. But um, but I have been trying to knock out as much stuff that I possibly can with the car. And um, as you guys can see, the first thing, I got a CSF radiator in there. I still got the protective stuff on it just to make sure. I was just doing some test fitting just to see if I had to trim anything or whatnot. But it literally just slid right in there like the factory one did. Um, I got some wiring ran, you know, for my uh, my flex fuel sensor, my map sensor, my GPS sensor, my fuel pump wiring. Um, I've been just trying to knock out other little stuff, just as much stuff as I possibly can. The next step is going to be uh, taking the car outside and washing it on you know, the engine bay just to try to get it ready because the motor should be ready from the machine shop here pretty soon and um and it's pretty cool because uh my oil cooler is going to be on this side which you guys saw in the video you know previous i think it was the last video i did of the car or the video before not quite sure but um i'm actually going to be running my air to water intercooler radiator on that side as well so they'll both be pretty much in the factory intercooler locations when this car was twin turbo and then the other cooler part about that is I'm also going to be running the AWE carbon ducts, so um, so pretty much I can try to get all the airflow to try to get to those radiator, you know, radiator and oil cooler as much as I possibly can, which I actually got that stuff powder coated, and I'm going to be uh, putting that on in this video. So I'm going to take the bumper off, and then I can show you guys how I got my built my brackets and whatnot. So for that side, the radiator I got for that side. Let me grab it real quick. So this Mishimoto radiator right here is actually made for an Audi S3. I think it's a 2017. I can't remember what years it was. I know it's definitely 2017 though. And this is what they use for the for the intercoolers, I believe. And then it was also for the transmission cooler as well. So pretty much I'm going to be using this for my air to water intercooler. And it literally fits in that factory um, intercooler location perfectly. So, you know, this radiator, it's literally the perfect size. It was the only size I could find that was very similar to some of the aftermarket intercoolers that they build for these cars, which, so I'm gonna be getting this in there. I copied the bracket that they make for the S3 as well. So it's a very similar how it's gonna, you know, bolt right in. So let me get this front bumper on so I can show you guys how it all looks. And just like that, I got the driver's side done. It can't, looks phenomenal in there. And there goes my oil cooler in there. So that way then all the air could just direct right into there. Um, I built a bracket right here, so then that way it could just bolt into here, and then I have plenty of space, so I'm going to get the passenger side on with uh, with that radiator, and then we'll slide the bumper on so then you guys can see how well it fits in there. Just like that, we got both of the ducts in, we got the oil cooler on, we got the air to water radiator on, which I'll show you guys that, how the passenger side looks. It looks real good. I got a clamp in here temporarily just to hold it against the core support so it could fit nice and flush. And um, there is a little bit of play in it, but I was going to figure that out once I drilled some holes out. I wasn't going to do that right now. I just kind of wanted to get this video wrapped up. And especially since I got all my brackets and everything all the back from powder coat. And um, it's coming out real good. I do actually have some other carbon goodies coming, which when they come in, I'll do videos on that stuff as well. And uh, so, yeah, let me get the bumper on so then you guys can see how it'll look. Now we got the bumper back on the car so we can see how that, the carbon fiber ducts look. And then also the oil cooler and then the to water intercooler radiator fits in there real good you got plenty of space as far as in there goes same thing on over here plenty of space um i am probably gonna have to cut this out so then that way i have a little bit more room right here for this hose for this hose inlet and then this is this one's just gonna go straight across then into the air to water intercooler which lays right here and um so yeah so that's coming out real good and uh, as far as the radiator setup, I think it's going to flow real good, especially since I, I'm not running air to air, to air uh, intercooler. You know, typically, they're about three or three and a half inches thick. So, you know, with it only being the AC condenser, this car should stay pretty cool. You know, we shall see. And then especially with running the electric fan, you know, I was even kind of thinking and eventually maybe even cutting out this whole inner, inner side and then just running two big fans, you know, but... In the meantime, I'm just going to run it like this, and then we'll just see how it goes, and then I'll go from there. I do actually plan on also ordering the um, that aluminum core support, so, you know, it could free up a little bit of space and whatnot, but I'm not going to order it anytime soon, but it definitely is an idea. So I may just end up doing that fan setup when I get that set up on the car, but, um, but yeah, and then as far as the motor, so the motor kind of took a little unexpected turn because... Uh, you know, it was supposed to be just a kind of simple, you know, rod swap. And, you know, when I was going to, you know, when I was going to put one of the rods and pistons in, 
I really was, you know, when I was lubing down the cylinder walls, I noticed that there was quite a bit of scoring and whatnot. So I ended up just biting the bullet and just ended, I ended up ordering some bigger piston. So the block is now getting bored out and whatnot. So, you know, it's going to be bored out uh, one millimeter. So I'm running 82 millimeter pistons, JE pistons. And um, so that's the route we're going. I should actually have the motor within the next week. And then um, the transmission is the only one. So, you know, I got to call the shop that has it because, you know, they did say they were going to work on it here and there to try to, you know, between in, in between jobs and whatnot. So I want to even make sure they even started on it, you know, because then if they didn't, I'm going to have to figure out something else with that. I might have to just end up shipping it to JHM or maybe I could find another shop. I had called quite a few of transmission places in the Orlando area and whatnot. And pretty much everybody said that they don't touch either. They don't touch manuals or they just don't touch audio transmissions. Now, you know, if you know anybody in Florida, you know, you could just, you know, drop them down in the comments or even just send me a DM on Instagram. So then that way I could try to figure that out. But, you know, the first things first, I'm going to reach out to the shop again and just see what's, you know, even if they started on it and whatnot, because uh, the motor and everything's going to be pretty much assembled pretty quickly. I have everything for it. The only thing that the machine shop's assembling is they're going to be putting the crank rods and pistons in the motor. And then I'm just going to put the oil pump, put the lower pan back on and all that, you know, all the other little fun stuff that's pretty simple to do. So make sure you guys look out for the next video of the car. I'm going to try to just, I'm trying to do as much little things as possible. And I wanted to show you guys where I put my map switch because I think it's a pretty cool spot. And um, and don't mind this Publix bag over the steering wheel, you know, because I had the carbon and suede steering wheel. So I didn't want to get it messed up at all. So um, so I actually put it in the center console because, you know, I don't, I'm not really ever going to use it. And um, it fits in there perfectly. I built it out. I bent it and all that. And then I ran the wiring back through there, which it was a little tricky getting it through there and then running it all the way to the front, which, you know, I ended up running like a rod through here and then pulling the wire through and then running it up that way and then ran it up through there. So then that way I could get it up in the ECU. And then, you know, what's nice about it too is there's more real estate there. So in the future, if I ever want to add buttons or anything, I could always, you know, just drill them out and then just run the wiring the same way. But, yep. And I do hope you guys like how the center console came out. I personally love it. But, um, but yeah, so we're just waiting on more parts to roll in. You know, I have um, some of the parts aren't really crucial because that'll be once the motor's in the car. Um, the one big one is the is the passenger side headlight, you know, because I have a carbon duct going in that. So then I can get some nice airflow for the turbo, which, you know, like I said, that's not really anything I need at the moment. And then the other one, the other big one is the new Project V5 in, intake manifold. The car already had one, but, um, but I'm running a hemi throttle body as of now. So, you know, so we can get some better flow in there. And then, um, and I already got my, my reducer to run to my, my cold side. I already have to then to that throttle body since it is quite a bit bigger. So, you know, once we get that stuff in, you know, I'll do a little video then with the headlight and then all the other little stuff, you know, once the motor is in, I am going to have to redo a couple of the fuel lines. I'm going to have to make the oil cooler lines, the air to water radiator lines, because, um, I'm pretty sure with that, well, with the fuel lines, I'm pretty sure that the throttle body sits in a different position. So... So yeah, so pretty much I'll just get that set up. It's pretty simple. Plumbing stuff is pretty simple. And then um, the next thing I want to mess with is to get this distribution block. I'm probably going to mount it under here somewhere. So then that way when the cowl cover is on, you don't really even see it. You know, before it was mounted up right here. So it's kind of free up the engine bay and then, you know, figure I'll just run the lines through this grommet. So it'll, it'll look a little bit cleaner in here. And then also the way I proportioned the brake booster hose on the new Project B5. I had them put it on the far driver's side as far as possible over on the top so then that way it'll be a nice short run too so slowly getting this together you know i actually got to take the rear axles out as well and send them over to raxles so then that way i can get those redone because uh, they are slinging some grease and um i pretty much already paid for it but you know since the car is now on the floor i could finally break those uh those center those lock you know those center bolts out and then pretty much just yank those out but yeah, if you guys enjoyed today's video, please like, comment, and subscribe. There's going to be, you know, once I get the motor back and I can start assembling that, I'll do videos on that. And then, um, so yeah, so this is JoJo's Whips and I'm out.